Malor Harden is doing double duty this season, uh, not only as uh, Jacqueline Carlisle on Freeform's The Bold Type, but also with a memorable, memorable guest spot on A Million Little Things. I'm Tony Ruiz of Gold Derby, and Malora joins me. Um, Malora, I want to start with A Million Little Things because you know, you've been in the business for quite some time, and so you know the ropes and you know how it works. But uh, for those of us that, that just kind of observe this from the outside, you go into an established show to do a one-shot, and you don't get the opportunity to build a character over a number of episodes. So, so what is your, what was your approach particularly with this particular character? Well, I mean, I knew that, uh, that they were probably going to be bringing her back. Um, I probably wouldn't have done it if it was just going to be a one-off thing, but I knew that she was interesting and, and I think the show is really fun. And, um, you know, uh, the, uh, her character's, uh, daughter on the show is struggling with cancer and, and, you know, that's really f interesting. And, um, and it was just, I just thought, I think the show is funny and I also think it's, um, you know, kind of really sweet and kind of heart, heart, heart driven. You know what I mean? It's got that wonderful, like soapy thing, but also um, real too, in a weird way. It's got that wonderful glossy kind of network kind of TV show thing that people love the kind of serialness of it, but it also is, is, is honest and real and funny um, at the same time as, as being heart, heart warming. So, um, so I, I, you know, I just wanted to bring all of that to it. Um, and in hopes that DJ Nash, the, the show's uh, creator and showrunner would, would do something fun with her. And he, boy, he has some very fun ideas for this, this coming <laughs> season. <laughs> So she so, is. So she is. So she is going to return. Yes. Yes. I'm coming in season uh, in episode two, um, and I'll be doing. Uh, I guess I have quite a big arc, and um, and supposedly it's hilarious and also heartbreaking. That's what he says. And uh, I have some. I'm bringing some. I have some information that will really rock uh, Maggie's world and uh, challenge her relationship with Gary. So uh, I guess everyone's going to have to watch to find out what that is. <laughs> Well, and it's and you talk about you know that kind of arc that's just in that one episode. I mean, the, the your uh, your first appearance is basically fighting over a parking spot, <laughs> and <laughs> and words exchanged without the knowledge that you know that your character and Gary are actually connected. Right. Um, so when do you look for parts where you get that kind of range where you get to go from something you know really really comedic and then you know, that scene in the, in the chapel is just heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. is, is that an appeal for you? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I'm always looking for things that are, that are meaty in one way or another. I mean, you can absolutely do a straight ahead comedy and it can be really juicy um, as an actor. You can do a straight ahead drama and obviously it can be very juicy. Um, so when, when things are kind of combined, it just, it's really, it goes, it's part to part, right? Project to project, but I'm always looking for opportunities to be creative and that, that shows up in many different ways, you know, um, and this character I think was particularly fun. She was particularly fun because she kind of seems hard and then you realize, oh no, she's, she's just grieving and she's like, she's totally threatened and scared out of her mind that she might lose her second child because she already lost her, her son, um, in a car accident, which you find out in the chapel scene. Yeah. yeah. And, and so how do you then, you know, most of your scenes were with the actor who plays Gary. Um, you know, so when you come in to do that kind of, you know, where there's really this kind of, you know, backstory with the two of them, even though they're only meeting for the first time, but there's all these layers to it. Is that something you work on in rehearsal? Is that something that you uh, talk about with the other actor? What's your process with that? Well, no, I mean, I think in that particular case, um, you know, it really was exactly like it was, right? I mean, it really was that they, when they meet, they're just, it's just an annoying person. That's like, you know, sh you know, my, my truth is that I'm trying to get to see my daughter as soon as possible. And that parking space was open and I'm taking it, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and he is trying to bring something to his girlfriend, uh, which, and, and that parking space is open and he's waiting for it. So, you know, everything could just be really played exactly truthfully in the moment because, because we didn't have to have, you know, any kind of, any kind of back, really, really back history. So that was really super fun. And, uh, and I like just, I like those things kind of just happening spontaneously, you know, Gary's great to work with. Um, 
you know, the guy who wrote who plays Gary, uh, it was great to work with. And just sort of the, the, the back and forth and, um, and Alice and I had actually, she plays Maggie, we had done um, 17 again years and years ago. And even then everybody was like, you two look exactly alike. You guys should be sisters in something, you know? Well, they, they almost got there. They almost got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. So that's uh, sort of fun. So so now you're, in your, you're now in the midst of the third season of The Bold Type and yeah. playing Jacqueline Carlisle. And what 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 strikes me about this character is that in we've seen shades of this character uh, in other places, but she's always played as a type. Like she's the strong woman, but that doesn't have a home life, or she's the boss from hell, or or right. whatever. And what I what's so interesting is that she can be all of those things, but at the heart of it, she seems like at least at at this point in the series, she seems to be kind of like the really the mother figure who's also a boss. So uh, how do you see her and, and what do you find so ref refreshing about playing her? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's really, really important for women, for all people to see to see mirror images of themselves on television. And personally, I grew up seeing a powerful woman in the workplace pretty much being a bitch. And um, so I think it's really empowering for women to see a powerful woman in the workplace being really good at her job, also balancing a family life, a marriage that's long term and um, being a mentor to these young employees, not backstabbing them and trying to trip them up all the time, but instead trying to empower them, trying to help them achieve their greatest potential. I love that this um, this episode uh, was it last week, I think, where they did a, a flashback to, um, you know, to when they when Jane first comes to the, you know, Jane and Sutton and and Cat first meet, and um, and you know, Jacqueline says to Jane, you know, because she's so excited to meet Jacqueline Carlyle, and uh, and she's just all flustered, and she's like, Jacqueline Carlyle, and 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 my character says, you know yes you know and you are and she says i'm an intern here you know i'm i'm jane sloan and i'm and and i say really cuz you look like a writer and you know and and so jacqueline has that way of seeing into someone's potential and then as a boss she's really amazing at helping to grow that and nurture that and empower that and that's the thing that i love most because the women i know in my life who are who are who are powerful women in the workplace are also really powerful women in the world and, and with their intimate relationships and their friendships and and the way that they lead and um, and I just think Jacqueline leads with grace and integrity and I think it's very important for people to see women doing that. And and you know going back to season two, um, you know we find out you know in season one that that Jacqueline herself has been you know a victim of assault. Um, and that that's, you know, followed her, but then that storyline comes back, uh, in an interesting way in season two. Um, what, what did you think of that, of that return to that storyline when it came up? Um, I love, I loved it. I think, you know, I think that the thing about trauma and grief is that you can get through it, but you never get over it. It's not something that just goes away. It's something that you have to live with. You have to include in your life for the rest of your life. And so I think it's important that it continues to be revisited in different ways because I think that's the way it really is in real life. Um, so I, I was really happy that they that they brought it up again and that you know you you find out layers of your the repercussions of um, your your actions or non actions in the case of of Jacqueline, which is that she was raped and she didn't uh, do anything. She didn't, you know, report it. And she didn't report it because at that time there was really not a lot of uh, support and she felt it would ruin her career. She felt that she would be stigmatized. Uh, she felt that people would consider her a victim and she's not a victim. She didn't consider herself a victim. And um, I think that, you know, that is slowly changing in our culture, but I think people still feel, you, you look at how many women don't come forward and how long it takes them to come forward. And, and so often people don't come forward until it's really too late. You know, you can't, I mean, you can't convict somebody after, you know, a certain amount of years. And I think that, um, 
I think that needs to change. I think women need to feel empowered to, to come forward and say, you know, this happened to me. And that doesn't mean I was wearing too short of a skirt or I was, you know, flirting with some guy or I was, you know, cause I think really what happens is most victims feel like they did something wrong. Like it is their fault. Uh, like it was sort of their fault and like maybe they could have done something differently and maybe they, you know, and so I really, really like that, um, that we do revisit it and that, and that Jacqueline uh, doesn't consider herself a victim. I really, really like that. And 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 what's so interesting, um, really, ab about the way that this show tackles not just that issue, but but many issues. You've had a a episodes dealing with you know people owning guns. You've had uh, you know men accused of you know having to revisit some of their past experiences and going, mm -hmm. oh, maybe I was the aggressor. What do you think is the secret to the fact that the show deals with these issues, but yet doesn't really, you know, it gives you like a multi-layered version of it? Mm -hmm. um, how, what do you attribute that to? Is it the writing? Is it are there conversations that you guys have behind the scenes? Yeah, I think it's absolutely the writing and it's absolutely the commitment of the show. I mean, the thing that the reason that I wanted to do this show, especially after coming off Transparent, was that um, I think on Transparent, I really realized that there is something so wonderful about making great entertainment that's also doing good in the world. And all the things we just spoke about, about, about how empowered Jacqueline is and, and, and the fact that the show is, to me, very modern and it's very... It's very um, it is speaking about all of these issues and it's not just giving you my perspective or Jane's perspective or Kat's perspective. It's trying really hard to, yes, the show is, um, not only is it truthful, but it's also aspirational. So everybody is able to talk about these things. People are able to have these conversations that aren't always so easy in real life. Um, I mean, all you have to do is look at our political system and how hard everyone is, how difficult it is for people to just agree to disagree and to still be able to have forward motion and to, you know, to be able to uh, make, get things done, even though uh, there's, there's really very, very different ideals, you know? Um, and I, I think that that's, I think that we are an example. I really think the show is an example for uh, learning how to like put down the bratty uh, histrionics and, and actually have a conversation and be able to honor that, you know, you think differently and I think differently. So if you want me to, to go over to your side, you got to enroll me, enroll me with intelligence, but I have to have an open heart. I have to have the ability to be enrolled. And um, I think you see that on the show over and over again. You see people coming in with some strong point of view that they are, but they are, they care for each other enough and they care for their work environment and their intimate relationships enough that they will open their hearts to one another and their minds. And so a lot to learn. <laughs> well, and, and Jacqueline is, is in many ways, you know, a woman that embodies an era and that era is somewhat being challenged. I mean, one of the storylines, you know, towards the end of season two at the beginning of season three is, you know, people wanting to replace her on the board and, you know, now she has to contend with this new head of digital media. And it, it's kind of reflects this, this uh, print versus digital, which could also be seen along the line, same lines as streaming versus, you know, conventional. Do you see parallels in some of the stuff that the show is talking about with how we, uh, how we consume media today? Yeah, completely. I mean, that that is another thing that really attracted me to the show at the very, very beginning. I loved how texting and social media was like part of the show, that, that really the texting and all of that is like is another character in our show. I feel like and I, I feel like that is the way that we communicate so much now, you know, I mean, um, so I really like that. And I and I, I definitely feel like, you know, Jacqueline is dealing with ageism. Uh, you know, we try really hard to um, to really sort of come head on to some of these these issues. And that's both through social media, through, you know, digital versus, you know, the, the actual uh, tactile, you know, magazine itself. And is that going to become obsolete? And, and is it going to become irrelevant? And how will that change her uh, job? Uh, you know, will she become irrelevant? And I think that that's... Um, 
really great, great stuff to be to be looking at and grappling with and challenging her with. And also having this kind of egotistical wunderkind kind of come in who is, uh, you know, just uh, uber confident, but really ha lacks respect and um, and kind of a pers perspective on what Jacqueline can bring and just her amount of experience and, and that years, uh, you know, years on the planet uh, does actually add to your wisdom and your ability to process and your ability to handle things with grace and to handle things with, with wisdom and make choices that are informed because they're informed by many years of, of something, your 10,000 hours or, or more that you put into something. So I think that's worth uh, looking at and, and the young people having curiosity about her is, is really uh, important because there's a lot of young people out there that don't have curiosity. And, and I think that's, you know, that's lacking in our culture a little bit. And, uh, you know, there's a lot to be learned from people that have been around and, and doing it and doing it well. And, you know, I always say to my friends, like, if you want some, you want a good relationship and you have a bad relationship, look at someone who has a, the relationship you want and then find out how they're doing that. Find out who their therapist is. Find out what kinds of conversations they're having with their husband or their wife or their partner. Don't, you know, don't just be going to someone who has a crappy relationship and asking them relationship questions. My left coach always says, if your head's up your ass, don't go ask somebody whose head is up their ass about the very same thing. <laughs> you know, go <laughs> ask someone whose head is not up their ass about that particular subject. And I think that's so wise, you know, and it's so weird to me that people do that where they like, they just keep on running that hamster wheel, you know, so. Well, is that something, is that something that with your, with your, you know, you've had a very long career and a lot of success. And, and so do you try to be that role model for some of your, uh, for some of your co-stars on the series? Um, do you, how, how do you interact with them? Because the interaction between the th the four of you are, is so clearly defined. And so what's your relationship, working relationship with them like? Well, I mean, I think I think it's quite similar to, you know, what you see on the show in the sense that, you know, I am that I am that woman with that experience. <laughs> um, you know, I am, uh, you know, 25 years their senior. I've been doing this since I was six years old professionally. Um, I've pretty much done everything that they could probably hope to do. And so I feel in the same way that Jacqueline has kind of landed and is an anchor for the show, um, you know, Jacqueline wants them to soar. And and I feel the same way. You know, I, I'm I'm definitely uh, someone who is rooted and landed and 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 very uh, confident and, and sort of secure in my position in the world. And um, and these are young ladies that are in their 20s. And, um, you know, I just want to, I want to, you know, put a little wind underneath their wings and help them, help them soar as much as I can by example and holding um, the kind of integrity that I feel uh, is proper and right for the show. Whenever I walk on set, I take that seriously. Um, if something's going wrong, I try to handle it in a way that is graceful and, and uh, professional. And um, I don't, uh, I don't generally fly off the handle. I don't, I don't believe that you should be disrespectful to anyone on the set. I feel that you should recognize that it is, you know, making movies and television is one of the greatest team sports of all. And that really the team has to feel happy and good and feel like we're all working towards the same goal. So I work hard to do that. And I actually feel that's part of my job. It's part of what they pay me to do. I take that, even the off camera things I take seriously and feel that it is part of my job. Well, and we definitely appreciate that. Um, uh, we look forward to uh, season two of uh, A Million Little Things and more of The Bold Type on Freeform. Uh, Malor Harden, thank you so much. Uh, everybody subscribe to goldderby.com and make your predictions for the Emmys, Tonys, Oscars, all Hollywood awards, and stay tuned for more broadcasts uh, this Emmy season. Malor, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You guys are always such great advocates of mine, and such you're just lovely, and I always love interviews with you because you ask really intelligent questions, and it's really fun. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay.